Hello, my name is Andrew. Welcome back to Straightforward Physics, where we aim to educate you and help you out with physics, whether you're studying for GCSEs, A-levels, IB, AP Physics, whatever. And today we're diving into one of the most fascinating phenomena that can take place with waves, the Doppler effect. And what the Doppler effect does is it describes the change in frequency and wavelength of a wave as the source of the wave moves relative to an obser observer. As we can kind of see in this diagram here, uh, we've got a source here, we've got it traveling with a direction, and you can see, depending on whether we are behind or in front of this traveling source, we are going to get a variation in frequency and wavelength, as we can see on the model. And we can see, talked about, um, in these descriptions here. So that's what we're going to get into today, how that applies to sound, how that also applies to light when we refer to it as redshift. So we have a few ways of modeling waves. We can either model waves as, you know, light rays. We can model them as sinusoidal functions. We can also model them as wave fronts. And this wave front model for talking about the waves, because remember just models are just analogies, poetry, mathematical functions to help us describe, you know, incredibly complex things around us. This model here of wave fronts is going to help us visualize and in turn have a route to understanding the Doppler effect uh, better than the others. OK, so I want you to be imagining waves and I'm going to help you out the diagrams, of course, so I'm going to bring up on the screen, but I want us to be imagining waves traveling in wave fronts, okay? So here we go. Imagining you're standing on the sidewalk, imagine you're standing on the pavement and an ambulance is there. So we'll start off in this basic situation. Let's say that ambulance is stationary for whatever reason. It might be trapped at a red light or I don't know, but it's stationary and it is emitting its noise from its siren. OK, that noise it's emitting is a constant tone, right? Or whatever. Thinking about F1 cars as well, cars racing around corners is going to be a really good way to imagine this as well. If the ambulance analogy isn't working for you, but we're just imagining something there emitting a constant tone or whatever. The sound of the engine, the sound of the, um, the siren on the top of the ambulance, whatever. Right. It's emitting a constant tone. So we've got these constant wavelengths we can see being emitted. Now, I think you know this from experience, but if you do have that F1 car or you do have that ambulance coming towards you, yeah, think of an F1 car. That's a little bit of fun for you, right? It is as it's approaching the pitch of the siren, the engine, whatever the sound, it sounds higher to you. As it zooms away, the pitch seems to drop. That change in pitch from the motion, whether it's coming towards you or moving away from you, is the Doppler effect in action. You might have heard a little Doppler effect there because right now I've got cars zooming past the balcony. So maybe you did hear some of that in action in the background. So let's break it down further. All right. Now we've got much like that first diagram we had. We can see as the source of the wave moves towards you, all right, the waves bunch up, all right? So that's why the wave front model is really helping us to imagine these waves sort of bunching up together, causing the observer to perceive a higher frequency, a shorter wavelength, right? We've got that inversely proportional relationship here because we're still looking at the wave speed equation, all right? Oops. V equals F lambda, V being the wave speed, F being the frequency of the wave, and lambda being the wavelength of the wave. Now, that wave speed isn't changing, right? This is still taking place in air, right? I still have, you know, that wave's going to be traveling at air 20 degrees, 343 meters per second, right? That's remaining constant. So as these waves bunch up together on the front, as we can see here, the wavelength is decreasing. So if that decreases 
to satisfy that 3-4-3 three, three in air, the F's going to get a lot bigger, right? And we also know that from the model. If I want to draw something, draw a sinusoidal wave with a really small wavelength, I've drawn one with a high frequency. I challenge you to draw me a wave that has high frequency and high wavelength. You're not going to be able to do it, my friend, right? If we can call each other friends. So we have those sort of bunching together. If that was in reference to light, we would call this phenomena blue shift. We'll get that into a little bit more in a moment. Conversely, right, when the source is moving away, because our ambulance is rushing in this direction, conversely, when the source moves away from the observer, the waves spread out, leading to a lower frequency and longer wavelength. If we were talking about this in terms of light, we would refer to that as red shift. Okay, so I've got the Doppler effect in action there. I've got the waves bunching up at the front, so the source is coming towards you, high pitch, right? And then if, I've got, if I'm standing away from it and it's moving away from you, the wave fronts are spreading out in this model, low pitch. So that's why you get the, right? High pitch coming towards you, low pitch moving away from you. And on some level, you'll recognize this, right? Because like, you know, when you're, moving around in the world you hopefully are using all your senses if you have them available to you and you know you can you can hear based on this you know shifting of pitches whether things are coming towards you away from you how fast they might be going um without even really looking at them directly like you've got an idea of that just from the sort of consequence of being exposed to this phenomena over and over again all the time right so there we were talking about it in terms of sound waves. It is not just limited to sound waves, right? It applies to all types of waves, including light waves, right? And when I say light, I'm going to include all light there. I'm going to talk about the entire electromagnetic spectrum, not just limit this to the small, you know, segment of, you know, a few hundred nanometers of wavelengths, which the cones in our eyes can pick up, right? It applies to all light radio waves, x-rays. We'll talk about, you know, in, a, in another video sometime, how there is a cosmic microwave background all around us, which is, you know, which is undergoing the Doppler effect. And it's uh, since it's moving away from us, it's reaching long wavelengths. But we'll get to that another time. But the important thing here is it's just, it isn't just limited to sound waves. It applies to all types of waves, including light waves. And it's a crucial concept in understanding various phenomena from the behavior of stars to the development of radar technology, right? For locations and stuff like that. So here we can see it is it's being applied to stars. Now, as we said, if a source is moving away from us, the wavelengths are gonna appear longer to us. And that is something we are seeing occur to um, occur with distant galaxies over time. We look at a galaxy and then we check up on that galaxy later, it increasingly appears more red over time to us because that galaxy is not only moving away from us, it's also moving away from us at an accelerated rate, right? Everything in the universe is getting further and further away from each other. The universe is expanding into itself. It's creating the expansion. It's expanding into itself. And the really weird thing is, is that expansion is happening at an increasing rate. Everything in the night sky is getting red and everything in the night sky is getting more red over time because it's not just getting away from you. It's getting away from you at higher and higher velocities. It's accelerating. Now, where's the energy coming from to fuel that acceleration? We don't know. So we refer to that as we usually have two terms in, in, in maths or science to define something we don't know. We'll either call it X, like find for X, or the X-ray, because we didn't know what that was at the time, or we'll call it dark. So all of that energy that's fueling all these galaxies moving further and further away from us and increasing rate, we refer to that as dark energy, because it's energy where we don't know where the hell it is. It's unaccounted for energy. Something I'll talk more about in the future in, in cosmology videos and stuff like that. So in conclusion, the Doppler effect, well, no, let's talk about the second diagram, right, before we wrap things up here. If everything in the night sky was becoming more blue, 
that's because everything would be crunching together, and that means these distant galaxies are coming closer to you. So I don't know, hide under a table or something because you have a spiral galaxy coming right for you. Um, so if things are blue, kind of screwed. Heading towards a big crunch, potentially. But let me just finish this off. So in conclusion, the Doppler effect is a fundamental principle in wave physics explaining how the perceived frequency and wavelength of a wave change due to relative motion between the source and observer. And I hope this video helped you grasp the concept of the Doppler effect. Um, stay tuned, please, for more exciting topics in GCSE physics, A-level physics, AP physics, IP physics, whatever you need, man, to get yourself through. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe um, if you found this useful. If you didn't find this useful, drop a comment below. Give me some advice, feedback, how to improve. Um, you're here to improve. I'm also here to improve. Um, and I'll just finish this off just with a few links if you want to stick to the end. But all these are in the description um, below as well. So once again, thank you for your interest and your support. It means a lot to me. Um, I am interested in educating and explaining physics and getting better at the craft of doing those things. So should you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to reach out to me here in the comment section or in any of the links I'm going to throw your way um, in our last thing that we're going to look at today. Um, if there's any topics you want covered or whatever, you've got any requests, um, you've got problems that you'd like tutorials on, please just get in touch because I'm happy to help because I'm here to educate. That's kind of the purpose of this whole operation. So if you want to find me anywhere else, I've got the link tree there. It's got everything. These are also in the description. You're already here on the YouTube. Please subscribe. I've got physics resources on my Tez shop stuff for free and some premium things. Um, we've got the Twitter page there. We've got the Instagram page. And if you are feeling especially generous, you can give me a coffee to go drink on on my coffee page. But thank you again for paying attention. Um, I will be back with more waves in the future. I will be back with more Doppler effect in the future because I do also want to talk about the redshift equations for calculating how far those, how fast, sorry, those sources are moving away or towards us because that's something that's very, very useful for us in um, determining a lot of different things, especially on an astronomical scale. So I've been Andrew, and until next time, bye-bye-bye.